Hello and welcome to each one of you on our special virtual series called Brand Talk. There is a lot that marketers do to build their brands. They try different mediums, they try different ways uh, from digital to TV to experiential to outdoor and a lot more. But how do you do that when you are yourself confined in four walls? When you have so many limitations, how do you ensure that the challenges you are faced with do not affect your brand? To discuss this and a lot more, we have with us today Mr. Karthi Martian, President and CMO, Kotak Mahindra Group. Welcome to the show, Mr. Martian. Thank you, Nazia. Pleasure to be here. Sir, uh, these are times of crisis. And uh, first thing that I would want to understand from you is that in these days, which are the brands that you look at, you know, which inspire you other than your own, uh, from which, which tell you, you know, what is the way forward? If you can share some examples. Sure. I think there are uh, many that abound and uh, it's really heartening to see both marketeers as well as business owners step up to the occasion, rise to the occasion as it were. Uh, I think top of mind for everyone, therefore for me as well, is certainly the Tatas. I think they have always been uh, stellar contributors to society and uh, even in this situation, uh, just a few stray examples of what they've been doing for it example opening up their hotel rooms to the doctors who have been serving us uh, night and day doctors and nurses which i think is really top notch and uh, take the uh, fashion and uh, uh, fashion brands who repurpose their manufacturing units to produce the personal protection equipment take perfume and alcohol brands uh, diageo for example which has repurposed its uh, assembly line to produce sanitizers instead of uh, alcohol at a time like this i think examples like these uh, are really stunning and really inspiring and what I think all of us as marketeers uh, should take away from this is to examine what we have as resources in our firms which potentially are spare now because it's not being consumed fully and how we can repurpose that to the ends of society at large and come up with ideas based on that and that's uh, what I am also with my colleagues constantly on the lookout for and trying to do. So what was your first response when you heard of this lockdown as a marketer and also as a human being? My first response was uh, even before the lockdown actually. Uh, coincidentally, my uh, daughter came back from the US on the 16th of uh, March. So the night of 16th March is when I went to pick her up. And uh, because we had been reading about this on a global scale, we as a family chose to self-quarantine ourselves from that very night. So we had almost a week's advance practice on quarantine being locked down as a family we stayed home completely but as we were staying home and not stepping out as well we quick i quickly got a sense of what it's likely to be like for others when the lockdown happens so access to essentials for example is clear but that also is for people who have access to money in one form or the other the thing that struck me first was that there are going to be lots of uh, people who are going to be rendered incomeless on the street which are these now we know migrant laborers and uh, daily wage laborers who are going to be rendered incomeless and they providing food to them was the first thought that occurred to me frankly uh, and we started discussions around that in Kota. Soon thereafter of course uh, thanks to Uday's initiative of uh, a personal contribution to the PM Cares Fund we've done a number of things after that but honestly the first question we had was if when lockdown happens what happens to the people who won't even get access to food. So you, yours is more like an essential services. We all care for our lives, but uh, still your banks are working. Your people are going out. They are still uh, at, on job. How do you inspire them? How do you keep them motivated? So I have a confession to make. I think our people are such, before I say that, of course, I must say that I salute medical professionals, municipal professionals, as well as uh, the police for they are really the soldiers at the front line of this war. But I am proud to say that my colleagues in the branches particularly, as well as a fair number in the back office, whether it's manning the call center, manning all the IT infrastructure, things like that, they are also, I feel, as good or as important and as providing as noble a service as all these people at the front line. Uh, I'd like to share just two or three stray examples which have inspired me and my colleagues. So a young boy in, uh, if I remember right, Baroda, a young boy in Baroda, a colleague of mine, uh, Yasim, I think his name is, the, on the 23rd of March, 
he sat down he set aside his job is to get people to open bank accounts with us he goes door to door uh, persuading people to open bank accounts he set that aside of his own volition without anyone talking to him he started manufacturing washable masks and in i think uh, as i understand it in within two or three days he produced 400 masks single handedly and then he uh, coaxed some of his colleagues to join him as well and that's uh, one example another is a colleague of mine in gurga uh, this was uh, after the lockdown had started and we had also heard these stray stories about police not understanding that even banking people are uh, essential services people in some places and uh, taking uh, lattes to them and so on uh, in that context he was called by his boss to say tomorrow you have to show up early morning because we have to go to one of our facilities because we have to make sure that all the salary accounts you know we have customers companies whose uh, employee salary accounts are with us and the salaries need to be paid on time especially at a time like this in the lockdown time and he was told uh, I'll, the, his boss told him i'll come and pick you up but this young gentleman decided to take the initiative he stepped out of his house looked for the first policeman he could find went and told them what his task at hand was explained that if he didn't get to office then people don't get paid and the police actually very graciously gave him a ride all the way to the closest metro station from where it was a short train ride away uh, in gurgaon and also gave him their number to contact in case he encountered any other trouble so you know we hear of all the negative stories because in some senses the negative is what attracts us but i must say that even the police have been doing a, such a fantastic job that by and large if you approach them correctly and you're in the right i don't think that they are going to be against you and my colleague uh, proved this uh, another example from my own team my marketing colleagues city after city they have been looking at these police check posts on the roads and in some places the police have managed to build little tents or whatever for themselves protection against the hot sun of april but in many places it's not there so my colleagues have gone proactively and provided the what we call beach umbrellas these large umbrellas which you can put to help them in this context similarly in about 8 to 10 cities we have now gone out and distributed uh, masks to policemen because honestly the doctors are actually our second line of defense because it's when someone is a suspect or a patient is when the doctor and the nurse come in contact well before that keeping all of us off the streets or when a person has or area has been identified as a suspect area for a covid outbreak the police are the ones who are going first so help helping them to protect themselves is equally important and i am very happy to say that we've been able to do that in about eight cities already and we are upping the ante on that as well so these are actually very inspiring stories and i'm sure once this lockdown is over these people will get more recognition because these days there is there's a sense of panic everywhere sure. people are not even keen on you know finding out what are the good sides of the human the good human side that this crisis has brought in many of us out yes. uh coming back to uh, the fact that you are an essential service uh you are on you know you, you don't have a manufacturing unit you you services are going on so uh, is this still the right time for you to you know uh, do advertising going out uh, talking about your product any new campaigns that you are launching uh, what kind of uh, marketing uh, tools are you do are you doing it right now or are you keeping uh, you know you going slow on it okay. so i'll break it up into two or three uh, pieces very quickly uh, and i'll also start by referring to an event in some way similar to this event that we all experienced in uh, 2000 was it 16 uh, demonetization so when demonetization happened if you remember everyone was rendered cashless overnight and in that we saw the opportunity uh, to try to get people to get used to a new way of banking and it's not that digital or mobile banking was new then but the large sections of our society were still doing it the old fashioned way which is physical so we took even the account opening process completely online where you could go into the app store download my app bung in your aadhar and your pan details and your account was up and running it was usable from that very minute and we made a claim of uh, under 3 minutes and we had for example a tech journalist rajiv makita if i remember correctly test it and he did it in less than 2 minutes actually and we saw something that we didn't even expect we saw that people from remote corners of this country where kotak didn't even have branches were downloading our app and were opening accounts with us and we went out and checked with them saying what's the deal we don't have a branch nearby you know that and they again like my colleagues young colleagues are ahead of me in the thinking and action on covid 
our customers are also frequently ahead of us. Their thinking is that if the, I have the app, 90% of my work I can do on the app. The rest, which is only withdrawing cash, I can do at any ATM. And there are plenty of ATMs, even if a quarter ATM is not enough. So based on that insight and that experience, at that time, I think we took roughly about 100 days to, from the date of the change in uh, regulation that RBI offered, where I didn't have to come and see your house and face to be able to open your account. I could do it offline in this method to start with. From that date of December 6th or 8th, within 100 days before the end of March, we were able to launch this. Even today, now in today we have exactly the same situation, right, for a very different set of reasons. My colleagues cannot and should not be knocking on doors, be meeting customers physically as much as possible. They have to limit themselves. The outreach part of it at least. And even if I knock on doors, nobody's going to open a door on me today, honestly. So they will open the door to Swiggy and Scoopsy, but not to Kotak. In this context, it becomes all all the more powerful and important for us to be able to offer the continue to offer this service and i have to tell you that in that context we are certainly advertising because we see this kind of a service in banking which is to open a new bank account for whatever reasons you may have still a valuable service so we've not discontinued that and the pace of growth is slightly slower but honestly not significantly slower what we certainly are not doing are the activities where we our marketing requires us to interface physically with customers that we completely shut down absolutely our branches are certainly open but what we've also done is we've very aggressively from day one of the lockdown put out lots of video communication literally like a netflix playlist we put out lots of video communication educating customers on how they can use all our digital tools and our call center to be able to benefit from all our almost all our services remotely and we are seeing a significant uptick like all banks are how does this video uh, conversation reaches them uh, through youtube so we okay. put up a playlist on youtube digital we are also yeah absolutely digital and we are also sending emails sms's push notifications so all digital means only mm -hmm. and uh, your uh, advertising on television uh, remains the same or it has reduced or uh, i think same we are not on air right now frankly but I think uh, almost any year, uh, we've typically not been on around this time, except for the year that we did launch 811 with uh, the start of IPL. So at the end of March or whatever, in, uh, two years, three years ago. Apart from that, typically this tends to be a slow period for us. So it's in line with that. It's not for any other reason that I think we're off air. Also, we are mindful that I think the time right now is one where we want to be sensitive to the health concerns of society at large. And we don't want to put either our brand or its uh, profit motive ahead of any other things. So in fact, a lot of our social media messaging also is around the health issue. So okay. uh, we are, uh, for example, we have driven a lot of our customers to use a very incredibly easy tool that we've built on our net banking and mobile banking to contribute to the PM Cares Fund. And I'm proud to say that within the last uh, week, 10 days, we've raised about 10 crores from our customers alone. And all they have to do is once they go to that page, enter an amount and uh, click and that's it. So no, no need to enter their details because we have it. No need to enter the PM Care account details because we have that too. So it's literally a single field they have to enter. And so people have responded as they have responded in other places as well, I'm sure. But people have responded to us as well. But, but ha are you also planning to launch any uh, big campaign during this period? A new campaign or something? Yeah. I think there's a nuance of difference between new and big. So new, certainly. Uh, the problem with big is we all visualize big as a mega television production, which takes a few crores and uh, we shoot in exotic locales and so on. That obviously is not tenable right now. But uh, we are constantly working on new things. And I think, you know, Kotak has, Kotak is actually a, uh, what I like to think of as a reform baby. So every step of financial reform that this country has gone through, Kotak has seen it as an opportunity to do something new. The latest is when uh, demonetization happened, actually. Uh, we see this event also as an opportunity. And from this, we also hope to be able to generate and deliver more value to our customers and therefore eventually, obviously, value to our shareholders and other stakeholders. So we are working on some things. I think it's a little early to comment on it, but uh, hopefully very soon we can connect again, Azia, and talk about that. So there's, there's somebody who's uh, sent, uh, he's not given his name, has sent uh, a question for you. Okay. Uh, how much of Kotex customers have access to smartphones? How do you reach to customers who have no access to smartphones? Hmm. 
customers who have no access to smartphones can just pick up their feature phones or their uh, landlines and call our customer uh, contact center, customer experience center as we call it now, at the very least. They are, of course, uh, welcome to walk into our branches. We just recommend that they don't at this time unless it is a matter of dire need. As far as uh, the question of how many of my customers have smartphones, I'd say that right now my estimate is that 60, 60 to 70 percent of my customers have been used their smartphones based on the number of mobile downloads I've seen and the number of usage traction we see on both mobile and net banking. There's another question Mr. Ankit J sent. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, my question is from Brand Solutions Purview. Consumer is expecting a large negative impact on income, which can make him her frugal. What kind of advertising messaging can change this mindset or should the advertising just concentrate on pockets of optimism? Um, I think it's a little early to be sure that there will be a large negative impact on income. Uh, we've uh, seen the risk of this come and go in multiple threats of recessions we've had over the last three or four years and none of them have actually played out. This time, of course, may be different. And uh, in that case, the question will be certainly a valid and important one. Uh, I would say that, again, if we are to be in service of the customer, then we shouldn't be the ones stoking her to spend more when she can't. What we should actually be doing is looking for low-cost solutions which will meet her needs in a meaningful way and for us to be able to make money from that as well. And that's where I think uh, large sections of uh, brands and uh, manufacturers should be focusing their attention. Uh, we're getting lots of questions. Uh, I have another question from Mr. Vini Thaluwalea. Would you like to comment on re comment of on real estate in the times of COVID? How much should a brand push on marketing and sales? Vinit, if I understand your question right, you're asking whether real estate brands should push on marketing. Yeah. Well, I think uh, not my business and I'm not an expert at all, but right now may not be the best time. You're still a marketer. Yeah, but I have to spend some time thinking about the problem, right? To answer off the cuff like this is irresponsible of me. That's my disclaimer. But I would say that if I were a real estate brand, I would uh, pause on marketing and advertising right now. What I would actually do to gain a uh, share of mind is for example, if I have a ready facility, if I have a building which is ready and unoccupied, I'd see if I can repurpose that to, for example, house hospital beds in a meaningful a quarantine way. facility. Yeah. 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 Create mindshare among people who can think better of me in better times because we know that many sections of the builder community tend to have a poor brand image because of a variety of reasons. This may be a way to build brand image in a meaningful way and in service of society right now. We have, uh, so this, this gentleman wants to know with individuals started, uh, started starting to losing, with individuals losing jobs, one might now be able, not be able to pay their EMIs. Do you think that the uh, moratorium announced by the government is beneficial and will it be extended for people who have lost jobs? This is again asking you to comment on something that government has done. <laughs> I think the government has been uh, thoughtful in some ways to be of service to people in uh, need or in dire straits right now. Let me give an example way back when from uh, Kotak. Kotak used to be very big, continues to be in the uh, commercial equipment business. So trucks and tractors and so on. And at a point in time, we saw that truck operators came to us saying that we are unable to pay our EMIs during the rains because our trucks don't operate. In the rains, nobody is moving goods up and down. So this was, I think, at least 25 years ago. And Kota, and I wasn't even there then. So when I say we, I it's very fly on the wheel. But uh, Kota came up with a solution where they gave them an EMI holiday for those three months, exactly like this moratorium idea, and said, pay your EMI over the balance nine months when you have income. We perfectly understand your problem. And we came up with a creative solution for that. I think uh, as time passes, if we continue to see challenges around incomes and therefore challenges around payment and so on and so forth, the government as well as banks will have to come up 
with creative strategies to solve these problems and they will i think the challenge really will be when we see malintent when people who are perfectly capable of paying but use excuses like these to not pay or evade or postpone that will hurt society at large because those few bad eggs will end up giving a bad name to all the honest ones who are perfectly willing to pay as soon as they are able also so we have to be mindful of that all actually sandesh bi wants to know how does home loan approval or dispersal happens in this lockdown it's a very good question sandesh and i must confess i don't know the answer i am happy to ask my colleagues and get back to you now we have a question for mr from mr rajiv malik vp marketing mahindra trucks and bus a lot of the sales process in automotive normally happens experientially face to face all the on ground activation won't happen now how can marketing step in to fill the gap and make the entire process of lead generations and nurturing the leads to conclusion without face to face contact road shows events so i'm we are seeing uh, green shoots of examples of this already in many places right just the fact that you know let me say we all had skype and microsoft teams and uh, google hangouts and, and zoom for, for so long yet suddenly out of the blue zoom has become the thing it's not like all of us couldn't work remotely before but we had a cultural mindset challenge because of which we didn't so i would uh, submit to you uh, my friend from mahindra that we can see this opportunity as one that challenges us to say let's do this only for example i have seen a lot of great work even from you guys on demo demonstrating your vehicles in 3d and so on and so forth on the mobile also you just have to accelerate that and tune that up now and because customers hopefully are sitting at home and have some spare time at least the time that they spare from their commute they are at home maybe they can use that and you can also connect with them and give them a virtual experience and in the lack of anything else maybe they will use that as a good enough experience to be able to make the decision to pick your brand instead of the competitors mr alok jalan wants to know what's the cotex view about the crisis its longevity and social impact how are you, how are you guys looking at financial year 2021 okay this is not in my uh, netting but i'll quote from uh, what uday said very early on during the crisis he said that we and by we he means the world is in uncharted waters right now if anyone is able to confidently predict how we are going to come out of this when and how the world is going to look after this i think they're smoking something that you and i should also get a share <laughs> what i uh, certainly feel is that there is some risk for every colleague of mine from marketing who's on this chat there is some risk that we may have to retool and reskill ourselves very quickly and we should use this time actually you know americans are very used to having done multiple kinds of jobs they've been carpenters and authors and teachers and lecturers and politicians and what not as a stereotype we indians particularly the educated ones tend to be far more uh, shall i say monotonous in our career choices i for example have been in advertising slash marketing for pretty much the bulk of my life if i lost my job i have no idea what i would do <laughs> i have no idea how to become a teller for example it's very hard so i think uh, reskilling ourselves and using this time to say you know i've always dreamt of trying to do that other thing this is the chance for us and that's something at least that i can predict that we will we should be preparing for because we don't know what's going to happen to the job market when you go forward and don't get me wrong i'm not a doomsayer i'm not suggesting we're all going to lose our jobs that's not my point but i think because we have all experienced this thing and because employees have also experienced this thing like uh, tcs has said for example that they have already realized that they can work with only about 25% of their workers being physically in their facilities 75% can work at home and they'll improve productivity by 25% from that so they'll go to 125 when they do that it's not that the jobs are being lost but certainly the way we work is changing for india particularly a lot of it people in the us already work like this but we are not used to it yet and if that kind of change is already around the corner expect other kinds of changes to happen as well and it's hard to predict what those changes will be and i think we should all be thinking about it and talking about it more and uh, preparing in whatever way we can think best so 
this question has also come from Manoj. Even I wanted to understand from you. Do you also think that customer behavior will also change? Our working styles will change. A lot of things will change. But do you think after this, these, this lockdown of I don't know how long will this prolong? But uh, you, you are expecting some change in customer behavior. Uh, definitely, and I think for my sector, a lot of it will be positive because I think they will go much more aggressively digital. They'll be comfortable with digital a lot more. So we will probably tune down on our physical presences as a sector. Kotak already is one of the leanest uh, physically present. We have uh, uh, physical outlets much smaller than many of our uh, market cap peers. So that's something I think will happen. Uh, jury is out on whether customers will suddenly become frugal or will they start spending again at normal or above normal levels. And uh, Mahesh Murthy, for example, wrote a piece uh, in LinkedIn uh, yesterday or today, I think, where he predicts that customers will start becoming more frugal and they will stop being seduced by brands who are persuading customers that if they buy X perfume and Y uh, handbag and Z uh, jacket, they are going to be more attractive or whatever and that they'll get more meaningful in their purchases. I think actually for those with the money, the opposite is going to happen. It's my hypothesis that... Uh, Events like this, which produce a lot of grief and anxiety, when the release happens, I think we as human beings will tend to uh, solve for those vacuums that have been created by that grief by becoming hedonist, more hedonist. We will consume more aggressively. It's like a hungry man. We want to celebrate it, you know me. No, not to celebrate. For, for, but we want for a few days at least. We want to feel good about ourselves, finally. Yeah. And the easiest way to feel good about ourselves is to pamper ourselves. How do you pamper yourself? You wear a fancy watch, you keep looking at it, you feel good about yourself. And I'm not saying it's a good thing. I hope Mahesh is right and I'm wrong, honestly. But I suspect that luxury brands will actually thrive post-COVID for these reasons which are uh, close to the core to the human condition. So Richard Goba has an interesting question. What banking products do you believe are going to be important for customers post-COVID-19? The ones that we wanted them to think of as important all this time, which is digital, so that we can have fewer physical interfaces, save all that money, provide more efficient and uh, economical products to consumers. So mobile banking as an example and everything that mobile banking encompasses, which is honestly 90 to 95 percent of everything you need from a bank today. A lot of people come to the bank physically in large measure out of habit or out of a misplaced fear that mobile pay kaam nahi hoga, kuch gadbad hoga, kahi to attack jayega. I don't have a human being to be able to resort to and say, see, I asked you what happened to this, etc, etc. But I think a lot of those fears have been proven to be misplaced for quite some time now. In COVID, it is, I think, very well established. So I am confident that people will actually take to mobile banking much more easily in the future than they did before COVID. Jagruti Shah wants to know, how does the bank aim at jumping back after the virus settles down? How will it gain back the mindshare of customers? What is Imagit's strategy to get going? I'm not sure we've lost mindshare because, particularly because people are staying at home and they're consuming a lot of goods and services which are being delivered to their doorstep. Their interaction with payment tools is actually heightened now. For example, and pardon the stereotyping, I don't mean to be uh, gendered in this, but I'm just giving it as a generalized example. Uh, in households where the woman was at home, the homemaker, and the man was at work, all the shopping or interactions that happened at the doorstep were all handled by the homemaker previously. Today, because the man is at home, free, all too frequently, he's answering the door and he's paying. And because of that, he's experiencing much more closely and viscerally those multiple micropayment opportunities and interactions, right? And when he's doing that, if he wants to shrug off that responsibility, he willingly is educating the homemaker who previously may not have taken to mobile payments so readily. Now he's holding hands and saying, Chalo ye karte hai. And almost every month, all the way down to the milkman is now willing and ready to accept a digital payment, right? Previously, not necessarily so. So in all these ways, I think, uh, honestly, I think bank money, let me not say banking, but money is mindshare has not disappeared whatsoever. Also, because like we are discussing here, people are worried that incomes are going to shrink and so on and so forth. So I don't think banking brands mindshare is the problem. Uh, 
what are we slow on we are possibly slow on for example home loans because i don't know how those deals are getting done when everyone is at home the builder is at home the buyer is at home the banker is at home i don't know how those deals are getting done which i confessed to earlier but those sectors once the lockdown is uh, over obviously will come back and will come back in an organic fashion i think jagruti i don't know if there is a better answer i can provide so next couple of questions if i can sum them up for you uh, they are basically asking you if media planning choices will change post this crisis so i looked at uh, spending behavior of my customers just this morning pre covid and post covid and uh, one of the stand out items on which they are spending their money right now is dth we have seen dth payments go up by a full 40% pre covid to post covid so people seem to be watching more tv more traditional television okay. if i were to use that as a metric right because they're paying for more tv that they weren't paying for before so it's not just uh, ott it's also tv so to the frequently this is the sitting duck right that tv is going to go away and all ott is going to take away all their lunch i think we are far from that because they are it's like all incremental media only becomes incremental we expand our consumption habits to accommodate more media we don't actually give up any media completely just like people don't give up branches completely even though everything can be done on the mobile they still come to branches they still never open a bank account with a bank whose branch they can't see near their house or their office in the same way so i think uh, media choices will also work in tandem with that i'd like to talk about something else in this context uh, all of us have received from some friend or well wisher a pdf copy of a bunch of newspapers every morning which is the full newspaper now all these newspapers were already online we could always go to their website or their app and read these story suddenly pdfs have been floating all over the place i suspect that it's the publishers who don't want us to lose the habit of the physical newspaper but giving us a facsimile of that a version of that inside our phones but that pdf on a phone screen is impossible to read frankly so i am a little confused about the purpose of that my suspicion is that it's to help us not forget the habit that this is what a newspaper looks like to again to the point of whether we will continue to advertise in newspapers kotak frankly has not been a big advertiser historically so i don't think because of covid we're going to change our behavior uh delkush khandelwal from vadwa group uh, my question is banking is the backbone of any economy and post covid 19 major issue in front of india is economic crisis the sphere has already started haunting uh, every family now how would banking industry address this issue to overcome this fear from marketing point of view so my colleague uh, nilesh shah from our mutual fund actually and you should look him up and he's got a couple of videos and write up and so on he is very confident that for india it's a 3 to 6 month journey to a full recovery and uh, i am going to bet on his uh, prediction on this because he's turned out to be right about many things in the past as well so from that lens i would say uh, people will be somewhat fearful there will be some jobs lost there will be some income shrunk for sure but uh, there's a very good chance india will actually bounce back much faster and much better and again to quote from uh, much more learned friends uh, that i have there is a very good chance that much of what is happening in the world today may all play into india's hands to give india a leg up so on the back of this uh, humanitarian crisis once everybody recovers on the world stage india may actually have a better hand to play and in many ways for example the fact that oil is so cheap now uh, may play into india's economic future and we may actually see a huge resurgence in uh, positivity economically as well so that's what i'd like to hope for and look forward to so you were talking about uh, change in consumer behavior uh, more and more people will move to digital so i've got couple of questions where people want to know how will will this eventually mean golden period for e-commerce companies i think definitely yes once you've gotten into the habit you it's very hard to undo so long as it's as convenient or more convenient as cheap or cheaper and as delightful or more delightful you an event like this is going to have, give people an opportunity to switch their habit it's like 
uh, I have this model where think of a wristwatch. Once upon a time, the wristwatch's purpose was to tell time. It was a function. Today, that purpose is completely lost. Yet, all own wristwatches because it's an ornament. And I think that is what happens. So we will move all our functional behavior online, and we may for still go shopping physically, but that shopping will be for entertainment. It will be to give ourselves a good time. It will be literally for that outing, right? And so we will move more and more of the functional activities online, and the offline will be literally for relaxation, entertainment, taking the family out, things like that. And so we may do the window shopping and the what they call showrooming now much more, and. What will happen to the stores? Then I don't know. That's a tough question, and they'll have to answer that between themselves and the real estate uh, commercial real estate companies. Mm -hmm. But that's what I suspect will surely happen. So e-commerce, yes, it's a big uptick for them for sure. Sir, so, uh, Lokesh wants to know how secure is mobile banking in India, as we listen regularly about banking frauds. <sighs> okay. 99% of frauds happen because you have been made a fool of and you reveal something to the fraudster which you shouldn't have. What we call social engineering. That you are conned into clicking a link you shouldn't or you are conned into literally telling someone your OTP, your CVV, your card number, your bank account number, things like that. 99% of frauds happen because of that. The tools themselves are incredibly secure. So if... Uh, Nazia, I tell you my password and you enter my password into my app and you take away all my money. Who's to blame? It's not the app. It's me. I've been, I've been stupid about this. So frankly, I think uh, all banking apps by and large are incredibly well made and well designed for security. It is human behavior which has to change and that is of course the hardest thing to do because we are by and large surprisingly trusting and gullible and that is the core of the problem. Even the bank moratorium thing that you referred to earlier, which the government offered, there are scamsters who have used even that. They are calling people up and saying, we are calling from the bank to give you your moratorium. You will get an OTP, please give it to us. That OTP is giving them access to the same bank accounts or credit cards or whatever, and they're cleaning out your accounts. Okay. So scamsters are always going to be ahead of the game. And that's unfortunate. You reported many such cases or just a few? Just a few, honestly. But that few to become many doesn't take very long. Because again, and there's no awareness. I mean, I'm hearing it for the first time I'm, that the entire thing has just happened. So, scamsters are so creative that every single day they're looking for the ways to do this. And human beings are, because they're so trusting, every single way, every single day, more and more human beings are falling for it. So, that's the real risk. It's uh, human risk. It's not the technology. Richard wants to know with digital banking becomes uh, with digital banking becomes the new normal for almost all of us. Do you think there is a very thin line now between banks and fintech companies? How are banks planning to maintain their positioning in people's mind? Yes, you're right, Richard. That risk is uh, certainly alive, uh, and I don't know necessarily if uh, maintaining a difference compared to fintech companies is the real challenge. I think we will have to embrace just like, uh, let me find an example. Let's say, just like a brand like Raymond's cannot think of Mintra or Jabong as uh, a digital uh, uh, apparel tech company. We have to think of them as competitor brands, right? So we will all, we also think of uh, the fintech companies as competitor brands. Uh, what we know so far, based on our study and understanding is that consumers tend to trust their large amounts of money with institutions that they see as trustworthy, which have the benefit of age behind them. They have the benefit of solid balance sheets, great reportage about the quality of management and stability and so on and so forth. And it's not that fintechs don't have it today, but 20 years from now, they will have it, of course. So Kotak is now a 35 year old brand. So when a fintech is 35 years old, it should logically be as trustworthy as a Kotak. How many fintechs will last that long is the only real question. But some will, for sure. Just like there was an NBFC meltdown in the 90s, late 90s, and Kotak was one of less than 10 entities that survived that. There will be less than three or four fintechs which will survive 20 years down the line. But they will be as serious a financial brand as uh, Kotak is. So we will treat them with the same respect that we will treat uh, our peers in uh, proper banking today. 
I want to take up. I we are we are very short on time, but I really want to take this last question from Saloni Arora. She wants to know how rural consumers will change in the current scenario. What will be the new normal for rural marketing, according to you? So the good news is, uh, and this again we have seen time after time, that the more starved a constituency is of great products and services. the faster they are to adopt newer ways of doing it so india has leapfrogged many things digitally for, for example even compared to america our banking technology is far superior to anything in america even today and we know this in some places even about hospitals people are saying the same things that we are ahead of the curve rural india because they don't have the benefit of large numbers of branches and atms they actually are well poised to take the digital leap even ahead of people in the cities because unko to milne se raha na they took to flipkart and amazon uh, the smaller towns and cities if not rural at least at least smaller towns and cities took to flipkart and amazon much faster than the big cities did because you and i can walk down to the mall and we like it those guys don't have a mall to walk down to so if they want the great brands that we have access to they have to buy it online i think the same will happen to rural before uh, we close i have a question for you how has this crisis evolved you as a person as in these are very unusual times i doubt you've been locked in your house for this long ever before how has this changed you as a professional as well as as a person okay as a professional i think uh, it has made me much more empathetic of my colleagues and respectful of them i uh, just yesterday one of my colleagues texted me and said that people are scared of me i was trying to host i hosted one zoom call with all my colleagues in marketing which is about 100 colleagues across the country and i found that people weren't discussing their lives they were only discussing work so offline i asked one or two colleagues what's the deal why aren't we able to let our hair down and they told me that they're scared of me i was a little surprised by that but also gave me pause to think about what about my behaviors is scaring them <laughs> what i can change about that uh on the personal side uh, i have reduced my consumption of carbs dramatically so <laughs> every lunch there is lunch and dinner there is some alternative to wheat or rice that i am trying to consume as my contribution to my health and i have never been in the kitchen all my life <laughs> i have now started making breakfast for the full family so big step for me i don't think it will move to lunch or dinner frankly because <laughs> breakfast is only a smoothie so i put a bunch of fruits in a mixer and get it out and give it to them but it's something yeah. actually uh, it has really changed many of us in a lot of ways yeah and uh, i'm glad that you're taking care of your health because that's also a very important uh, aspect which many of us are trying but we are not as successful as you are <laughs> so uh i still have many questions to go maybe we'll have to uh, request priyanka to arrange another session with you some day because uh, we'll not be able to take all these questions uh, we are almost we are just left with 2 minutes so before i uh, uh, say uh, close this i want to uh, tell all of you to join us on 23rd april uh, thursday 3:30 pm to 4:15 pm on facebook live with our next session of brand talk Uh, we'll have it with Mr. Tarun Arora, CEO Zydus Wellness. Mr. Marshan, you also please take out some time and join us there. Your thing, Nazia. Thank you very anything, much. Anything, anything that you would like to, any any piece of advice that you would want to uh, give to all our viewers as well as your colleagues and juniors before we wind up. So I don't think I'm tall on advice. Frankly, I am always hungry for ideas. so if anybody has ideas on how people like us which is uh, financial services providers can deploy their resources which are too spare in our case it's mostly people because we have very little else apart from people we don't have hotel rooms to give away we don't have factories where we make something that we can do something else with unfortunately we have people and i have to just say that some of my people have been ahead of the curve so in indore for example some of my colleagues have reached out to their customers who are nra customers and said if you have aging parents in the city who you are concerned about then please tell us and we will take medicines and food and so on so ideas like that or even different ideas if you guys have ideas please reach out to me directly or uh, if nazia can enable that in some way sure. because we need to be more and more uh, contributors to this 
uh, cause and this uh, crisis than uh, benefit us from it. And uh, that's the only advice I'd give all of you as well. See how you can help. Look for ways you can help while staying safe, of course. It is actually the time to be human first and help as many people as we can while we stay safe in our own home or we take precautions when we step out. Thank you so much, Mr. Martian, for joining us. And thank you to all the people who were sending me questions. And I'm sorry the question, for, for the questions that we couldn't take up. We'll definitely try and get Mr. Martian again sometime soon and uh, finish most of the questions. Okay, thank yeah, you again. Leave these questions somewhere so we can answer them offline. I'll, I'll try. I'll try if that is possible. I'll try. I'll check with the technical team. Thank you so much. Uh, I think uh, we... We have uh, finished it exactly on time. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Martian. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Thanks.